Welcome to Yates Makes. Now this video is mainly about stenciling and why you get so much mileage in terms of experimentation and possibilities out of a stencil. We'll look at stencil techniques, how to prepare backgrounds using collage, sanding, building layers. But the video is also about how as artists we need little stepping stones, springboards, how one idea might spawn a kind of wealth of opportunities in another direction. So let me take you back a couple of weeks to when I was doing some gel plate work based on this idea of um, Brighton Pier and I've done an oil pastel drawing which I then used as a kind of a resist transfer on the gel plate which I then subsequently transferred over a kind of underpainting and it was that transfer image that presented one of these opportunities to me. As I pulled that transfer image up, I immediately thought stencil, you know, I'd, I'd drawn it on some quite heavy paper so it would work really well as a stencil and I kind of ditched that project immediately and just got straight on with cutting a stencil. So this video is kind of progress so far using that stencil and um, I've still got it. It still works and it will still work for many more stencils. All right, let's get into some techniques. Now, I'm not going to lie, this was a fiddly, laborious stencil to cut. I've only tried one of these kind of web lattice type stencils before. Years ago, I tried a tree. That worked, so I was kind of encouraged. Now, it did take a while to cut, and it took a few sittings because, you know, my fingers just cramped up. But, as I said in the intro, it really pays dividend your work because you can use these so many times. So there's a couple of stills there of a few repairs I had to do, but stencil ready to go. Okay, so this first experiment was on a piece of 12 mil plywood. I'm just sealing with a couple of coats of gesso. Here I'm just placing my stencil, working on a kind of rough thirds rule of composition, um, just to see how the thing might be arranged. So. Having done that, I've got some liquid gel medium and I'm just placing a very thin sheet of collage along that bottom third to kind of mark out where the C will kind of occupy. Um, the collage I want to work kind of within layers of paint and you know, you'll see as the video develops, but I'm hoping that it will pick up, the relief of it will pick up when I start sanding. So that's dry. And with my last layer of gesso, I've just added a bit of acrylic paint to kind of stain it, um, which will be my kind of first base layer of colour. So slopping that all over, let that dry, and then I'm going to try my first kind of resist spray paint techniques, which I think I've covered in a previous video, but if you use drops of water, splatter them onto the area you want to build a texture on. Before they dry, get your layers of spray paint down and obviously where the spray paint has made contact with the substrate that's dry, it's going to dry really fast, but that water is going to resist the oil-based spray and you should be able to, with a rag, as you'll see me doing in a minute, rub that away and start to create textures. You know, this has got loads of purposes. If you doing some collage and mixed media work, you could incorporate this technique in any number of ways. I'm just trying to do it in layers here. Um, this being my first layer, just to get some very subtle textures that I'm gonna sand through and build up slowly through subsequent layers of color and acrylic washes and so forth. But there you go some of that texture starting to peep through. So, um, so again, splatting more water on, spraying another color and um, wiping back. You get the idea. Um, this is all very much experimental. I just was the early stages seeing how some of these materials might behave, how some of the colors might work as I sanded through and kind of revealed the layers beneath each other. Okay, moving on. What I tried next was some very thin glazes of acrylic paint. Now, the glaze I achieved by using Liquitex liquid gel medium, which um, keeps some of the body of the paint, um, so it's much better to use than as a thinner than water, but 
um, and it, your color kind of disperses really evenly through the mix. So Liquitex liquid gel medium, fantastic for glazing. As those layers dried, I then got the electric sander out and um, as you can see up at the top, if I zoom in now, some of those where I've splattered water and um, spray painted, they're just starting to peep through very subtly those textures. And you can also see how that collage piece has suddenly kind of emerged through the layers as I've sanded that edge. And I'm getting kind of, you know, almost like a sort of, um, you know, the, the grain of the wood peeping through as well. So this layer was a slightly more opaque, thicker mix, more paint, less liquid gel medium to get some dripped textures, which I let kind of run down the painting, let them dry completely. And as you can see there, as I sand, different layers are starting to peep through and I'm getting some kind of textural subtle interest that I was after. So here I am like my first placement of the stencil just to see how um, it's going to work. So with some spray mount on the back of that stencil and making sure all those dripped sanded glazed layers are totally dry I've placed my stencil making sure every little detail is um, stuck down. I'm splatting a little more water and I'm um, going to go in with my first kind of major layer of spray paint that's going to kind of reveal my image. So, as I said before, I wanted really quite a subtle, kind of misty, impressionistic kind of colour palette here. So, I've gone quite light. It's not white, it's like a very light, creamy grey. Those water splats I've put on, I'm just wiping off where the water is or the sea is. Um, then I'm continuing to spray. Obviously, if you leave it too long, um, the paint will dry and um, burst through that water and, and sit on your substrate and you won't be able to remove it. But, you know, just building up my layers nice and gently. If you've never done much spray painting before, try to keep the can moving. Try to only depress the kind of uh, nozzle whilst your hand's moving otherwise you're going to get big splodges okay that um a layer of spray paint dries really quick it was a warm day it was sunny so dried in seconds really here i'm just splatting on some orange which again is acrylic paint mixed with liquitex gel medium and with a sponge and using the back of my hand as a palette before those completely dry i'm just kind of softening some of them particularly where they've sat over my stencil. So I'm now getting a kind of orangey kind of light glow. Well, that was the idea anyway, that's kind of seeping through from behind the, what will be a silhouette, because that's what I'm gonna create effectively with my stencil. So this is just to kind of create the impression of a bit of light glowing from behind that stencil. So when you peel up, Got a bit of cleaning up to do there some oranges seeped onto the actual silhouette but yeah i've got some nice light shift and kind of variation in um uh color and tone so again sanding don't be afraid to sand straight over what you've just stenciled um the beauty of a stencil is you can always place it back and respray if you need to so uh the colors just shifted there because i've come indoors and i'm under artificial light now this is again a mix of Liquitex liquid gel medium, some acrylic paint, and these are washes or glazes of colour. Just trying to bring some of the foreground a little more forward by staining with some, some deeper greeny blue colours, which should work quite nicely over the top of my base layers and soften some of that texture as well. Again, the beauty of working like this, if you don't like anything, you can either spray over or you can sand it back. Um, this is why I love working in glazes um, and with these materials so much. Um, again, more Liquitex, liquid gel medium, more acrylic. Get your nice thin glaze and I'm going for a kind of little sun reflection in the sea. Very impressionistic, very loose. Some of that bluey green up in the sky as well just to kind of create a bit of depth up at the top 
of the image as well and then done how simple was that really not a lot to it most of the work is done in the cutting of the stencil um, that was a new one on me not the sort of colors I usually go for not the sort of atmosphere I usually go for but I really enjoyed it um, and like I said before this is an experiment that will spawn further experiments now that I've got that stencil done I'm going to keep exploring color and surface right on to my next one, completely different. This went through so many kind of iterations and different lives and transformations, this one. So at this point, all you'll see me doing is working far more roughly here, very heavy textures, loads of collage where the C is gonna be, experimenting with different colors, um, scrapped this immediately because didn't like it and um, didn't film much of it but you see from the next still the jump from here to here where I've completely wiped the C out again with collage and I've completely wiped the um, sky out with black re-stenciled in in a kind of creamy white colour to, to get my silhouette and what I'm now doing is masking off my layers of collage that are gonna be the base for the, the sea and the foreground. And I'm masking off in very thin stripes of masking tape to do one further layer of spray paint, which I'm then gonna sand back, hack into with the knife, rip bits up, pull bits up. So there's my last few little bits going on before I go and spray just to try and soften all of this collage back, break it up even further. So I'm masking off the bit that I obviously want to retain, which is my silhouette of my pier. I want to keep that intact because I was kind of happy with that by this point. Um, outside, obviously, I don't need to tell you, do I? If you're spray painting, just make sure it's well ventilated, wear a mask as well. Um, so yeah, just knocking out with a nice thin layer of paint, some of that collage. All of this I can get back just by sanding, which is what you'll see me do. Peeling up those bits of tape and starting to come together. Now, another interesting technique you can do with collage. If you've built enough layers, and I'll do a separate video on this if you're interested, just drop me a comment below. Um, what you can do is cut straight into that surface, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm going to have some lines running straight through this. And if you then dig your knife under one end, try and catch a layer or two of that collage and just start peeling up. Now, obviously, you've not got a lot of control what's happening here, but, you know, therein is the fun and the spontaneity and the interest um, for you as the kind of maker, if you like. You stick your knife or your scissors in, or your spatula or whatever you're sticking under there and who knows what you're going to reveal um, you know for me it's a really fun way to work you know bits that you might want to keep you can stick back down again um, you can rip you can do straight edges as I'm doing here a really lovely way to work as I said before just drop me a message if you want me to cover some of these techniques in a in a further video all right Sanding, this time hand sanding rather than with the, the electric sander, just so I've got a little bit more control of pressure and precisely where I'm picking up or leaving intact some of those layers. And I'm almost ready for the kind of final stage, which is to try and use my stencil inverted or flipped, if you like, to try and create a reflection. And this is something I hadn't tried before, um, which just kind of occurred to me as I was working. So here it is up to the point where I am. I said, you know, zoom in, you can have a look at some of that collage, the way some of those layers have been cut into, ripped. Um, this is newspaper, magazines, all sorts, handwritten stuff, you know, like lined paper, squared paper, graph paper, all sorts has gone into that. So there's a few stills of where I'm up to now. My next stage was to um, put another glaze of colour where I want my reflection. So again, I'm mixing in some gel medium with this kind of dark grey colour. 
not worrying about neatness this is just going to be again a very fractured broken reflection of the pier so it's just got to be enough color to stain your collage it doesn't have to be so well i didn't need it to be too opaque mixing color and gel medium directly onto the surface as well once that was dry I flipped that stencil and just trying to position it. This was tricky because I've still got some residual um, spray mount on the reverse side, which is sticking to my fingers, but I managed to get it down there, masked off my top edge, went outside, sprayed again, and you can see that actually where the stencil hasn't fully adhered, um, it's actually got me some nice soft blurred edges as well. So here was the kind of final step where all your layers of broken collage because they're in different kind of heights of relief on the surface, they catch, or this was my theory anyway, they would catch the sandpaper. Um, I'm using a, a block of wood there, so I've got a nice flat surface. And sure enough, produced me this kind of like broken reflection effect, which I was quite chuffed with. And this is something, again, that I can return back to, you know, keep banging on about experimentation and making every piece like, you know, your aim should be, or my aim is always to try and have something in there is, is going to be a little revelation, something that I can push forward and use as momentum for further work. And job done. You know, what, you know, loads of fun. And it doesn't really end there. It ends there for this video, but I've got that stencil and I can just go off and keep playing, keep experimenting. So I'll leave you with just a few stills of how... You know, a few bit more close up of how that collage worked in some areas. A lot more of the texture and colour peeped through. Other areas I've blocked it out to get my kind of reflection and imagery coming through. If you enjoyed the video, drop me a comment below. Remember, support the channel by subscribing, liking and so on. I'll look forward to seeing you in a, another video soon. Take it easy. Ta-ta.